Psalms this morning, Psalm 27. So if you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to Psalm 27. As you're turning, I just kind of want to, uh, maybe, maybe you're familiar with this. Uh, you only had one job. Have you kind of heard that? All right, you only had one job. Well, I've got, I've got some pictures that I want you to, to look at and just kind of understand they might have missed their one job. All right, so let's look at the first one. Um, by the way, if I was a carpenter, that's what I would do. I mean, that's just me. Uh, so don't ask me to build any desk or anything else. So that's, that's one. Now let's go to the next one. <laughs> Something went wrong. Something went wrong right there. All right, let's third one. <laughs> Only had one job. And he, he missed it. He missed it. The, the last one. I might have to read this one to you. It's a, it's a uh, fortune cookie. And the fortune is outside of the cookie, and it says, the job well done. <laughs> Not really. Not really. One job. I mean, just one thing. And, and, and missed it. And not just a little bit. I mean, just missed it completely. One thing. Well, in 20, Psalm 27, David talks about the one thing. I mean, he makes it clear. <laughs> this is the one thing I wish, the desire. It's the cry of my heart. It's my passion. One thing. And, and uh, he says, I just want to be where you are. We just got through singing that song. I, I think you could say that song came straight from this psalm. I just want to be where you are, to seek your face, to be in your, your presence. So, so that's the end. All right? that's, that's, the, that's the essence of the, of the psalm. So let me pray and let's go home. No, 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 we're not. I want to back up. Because I want to look at the context of this psalm. David's the author. And, and I've been guilty of reading this psalm. And I, I get to verse 4. And this is the one thing. This is what I seek after. This is what I want. I want to be where you are. I want to dwell in your presence. And gaze upon your beauty. And I, I want to seek after you with, with all that I have. With all, that I'm, with all of my heart. And I'm thinking, all right, you're king. I mean, you have no pressure, no, no troubles. You're, you, you, surely you're playing your harp and you're just like, this is it. And, and, and I just kind of paint for myself in my mind like a, 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 a scene where there's no outside distractions. But if you read the psalm, what you find is, oh, there's outside distractions. And there's so many things in, the, in David's life that's going on that so easily could have distracted him from wanting this one thing, from pursuing after this God. So let's just jump in. And I want us to, we, we, know, the, we know the point. We, we know the essence of what David is saying. I want to be where God is, but I want you to notice the context. Look at verse 2. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. And David's talking about war taking place. His, his army's at, at war and, and there's wickedness going on and they're, they're trying to siege uh, uh, Judah and Israel. And David, the king, is, is having to navigate life and battles and people wanting to kill him. And people wanting to overthrow, wanting to overthrow him. And, and so this is going on. You could call that maybe job distractions. It was David's job. King, leading troops to, to battle, leading troops to, to war. And then jump down to verse 10. David says this. He, he goes away from job to home. I'm, I'm sure it's in verse 10. No, it's not. Maybe not. Distractions, just like this one. <laughs> you know how it is when distractions happen, don't you? I do. <laughs> Whether it's at the job, whether it's at home. By the way, that's not it. So uh, it might be. Who knows? It, 
Yeah, verse 10. What was I looking at before? <laughs> though I don't either. My, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. So now he's talking about home. Now, we don't know what the situation is exactly with David at home, but, but he's saying, my mo- father and my mother are forsaking me, and, and, and so there's pressure at home, there's, there's dysfunction in the home, and, and then he says there's oppressors. We don't know exactly what, what that is. He says there's false witnesses rising up against me. They're spouting malicious, malicious accusations. I mean, David's life's not perfect here. In, in my mentality, a lot of times when I read this passage, it's like, well, that's King David. He's king. He's, he's righteous. He's blameless. He's, he's got a, a heart after God, a man after God's own heart. Oh, he had his failures, that's for sure, but... But still King David, and yet when I read this chapter, I'm like, oh, he's got pressure at the job. Oh, he's got pressure at home. He's got dysfunction going on in relationships and false accusations being said and and reputations trying to be slandered. And and in all of this, by the way, I call this life. (laughs) I've heard it called the whirlwind. And the, the whirlwind just happens, does it not? And the question is, during the whirlwind... Are you still going to be staying focused on what God is calling you to do? And specifically, are, is your one thing still going to be, I just want to be where God is? So when I was preparing this message, the week that I was reading and studying and preparing this message, I got a phone call from my daughter. And she was supposed to be taking the vehicle to, uh, to get an oil change. And she said, Dad, I've had a wreck. And I was like, that's not a good statement. Everyone's okay. Everyone drove away. Everyone was healthy. All that's good. All that's fine. That's a praise God moment. But, but I, knew the, I knew the hassles that were ahead of me. Like, God, I could have done without this this week. The week before. The week before, both my uh, Jeff and Lauren uh, living in Amarillo, and, and it was that time in which Every night there was a thunderstorm coming through and you had to watch for, for hell coming through. Well, one night, both of their vehicles got hit by hell and like, God, I could have done without that. About this time, we were also moving and moving into our new home and, and moving's never fun, you know. And moving twice in two months is really not fun. And so all this is going on and it's, and it's just life. And here's the, here's the story. You could tell the same truth. You know, things are just not going good at home right now. Or my lens, I, I just can't make the money meet the budget. I don't know if you've seen, but inflation's on the rise. And you're like, I, I could have done without this. The life's happening. The whirlwind is happening. And some of you could tell stories of of more than just a little bit of whirlwind. It's just gone into a flat-out tornado and has ripped up your life. And when I I understand the context of what David is in and and, and David's living in and the job and the being king and and home and and relationships and in the midst of it all. Now let's go back to verse 4. In the midst of it all, he says this, one thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. One thing I ask of the Lord. If you boil it all down, this is it. It's what I seek after. It's what I pursue. It would be the priority. What is it? To dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, when I read that, I'm thinking, you know what? I could have had another one thing than to spend time in church all the days of my life. 
But understanding where David's coming from, he's talking about the, the, the tabernacle or the temple. And in this, in this construction, there's a room in the inside you know, called the holy place. And then there, there's a room behind it called the most holy place. And it's in this most holy place in which they took the Ark of the Covenant that, that uh, God gave Moses the instructions to build. They put this, the Ark of the Covenant, in the most holy place. And there was a veil, a veil, there was a curtain between the most holy place and the holy place. And, and no one could even enter into the most holy place because it was that place in which they said God dwelled. Once a year, the high priest would enter into that, that holy place to, to offer a sacrifice. It's where God was. And what what David is saying is, this is my one thing. I just want to be where God is. I just want to be there. I just want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? Because that's where God resides. You can have everything else. You can have the kingdom. You You can have the family. You can have it all. I just want God. And I just want to be where he is. That's his one thing. That's his one thing. So back in 91, I was a BSM student missionary. and and We didn't have smartphones back then. And so uh, I took a couple of CDs with me to Brazoria County. By by the way, my, my daughter is a BSM missionary this summer in Lake Tahoe, California, and I went to Brazoria County, Texas. <laughs> Something is wrong with that picture. <clears throat> but I took, I took some CDs with me, and one of the CDs that I, I took was a, an Integrity Music Worship CD, and, and, and I, I listened to, to that CD all summer, and there's a song on that CD. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. I just want to be with you. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory. I just want to be with you. That's David. That's what David is saying. This is my one And then he says later in in, in the middle of verse 4, he says, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Last September, Anita and I went to Utah, to Moab, Utah, and you had the Arches National Park and Canyonland National Park, and there's a state park there. I'm just telling you, we were, for five or six days, we just went to the national parks, and, and we were in God's creation, and we were in awe. Of, of the creation in front of us and worshiping the creator. But we're gazing upon the work of the creator. And gazing upon the work of the creator just blew us away because it was magnificent. And we were silent. Words could not express what really was going on in our heads, our thoughts. But David is saying, no, 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 no. I'm not saying gaze upon the work of the creator which points to the Creator. Uh -uh. I'm telling you to gaze upon the Creator, to gaze upon God. I want to gaze upon you. And all you have to do is do a simple reading of of Psalm 27. And and you see that David brings out time and time again, he just puts the things in the psalm about, oh, this is is the God I I want to be uh, with. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my stronghold of my life. That's, That's verse 1. He says, the, 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 for verse 5, the day, the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He he's, protects me. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent. He's my refuge. He sets me high up on a rock. He's, he's my foundation. And you just read through that and you're like, oh, David is talking about the, the attributes of God. Verse 13, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of God. God is good. And so David, and, and you read through the Psalms, I think David did this on a regular, a regular practice. I think he just took time to reflect upon God 
His goodness, His love, His mercy, His grace, His protection. And when He did that, He just drew him even further into the fact that I just want to be where God is. I just want to be with you. Verse 8 continues this line of thinking. My heart says of you, seek His face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior, my heart says if you seek his face, I love this, your face, O Lord, I will seek. That's his one thing. You shed everything else in his life and his heart and his priorities He would say, this is my one thing. I want to seek God. Here's my question. What's your one thing? What's your one thing? If you're like me, I do my best to try to bargain with God to say, can I have two? I mean, God, you're in the picture, that's for sure, but can I have two? Can I have three? I I really want to bring these two, these three. And and here's the deal. Usually what we want to bring into the picture with God is no, they're not bad things. It's just they don't need to be your one thing. And, And if you have two in the picture, you don't have a one thing. And what you're trying to do is is you're trying to, to bring this one other thing into the picture to say, I want both. In essence, you're, trying, you're saying, God, I don't want you alone. I want you and. What's your one thing? So let me speak on this just for a minute. So today is July 4th. Time we celebrate our country. And I am a patriot and love the United States and so glad I'm I'm, I'm here, living here. But your love for country should be nowhere close to your love for God. And if I can push a little bit, sometimes when I'm looking out there, it's hard for me to tell the difference. Because they're so close. I wonder what would happen if we became as irate over folks blaspheming our God than we are irate over folks blaspheming our country. If you're more upset over the desecration of a symbol for the country more than you are upset over a desecration of the God's name name being used in vain. Where's the line? Nothing to say against love for country. I'm just saying it's never to be your one thing. Now, truthfully, I could talk about family. I could talk about job. I could talk about money. I could talk about education. I could talk about friends. I could talk about popularity. I, I can talk about all those things. And, and, and the answer still should be none of those things should be your one thing. David says there's one thing that I ask. There's one thing that I seek. To dwell in the presence of God all the days of my life. What's your one thing? I love how David ends this chapter. Verse 13. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This tells me that David is is going through some tough times. I I remain confident of this. 
He reminds himself, I, I remain confident. And he says, wait for the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is in the land of the living. But then this phrase says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I, I, I sense, sense, see David is in a situation in his life that he, it might not be, the goodness of God might not be right in front of him. But he knows it's there. And he's going to stay steadfast. And he's going to stand firm. And it's going to come a time where God's goodness is going to come through. And wait for it. Be strong. Take heart. Take courage. And wait for God because he is a good God. And, and there are times, and we all experience these, there are times where you just throw your hands up and like, I just don't get it, God. I just don't see you, God. I just don't know what's going on and why things are happening, God. Why don't you do something here? And David would say, oh, I'm confident of this. Although you might not be able to see it right now. But I believe the goodness of the Lord is in the land of the living. So wait for it. Wait for it. Be, take, take, be strong. Take courage. Take heart. And wait for the Lord. And, and in the meantime, here's what you might have to do. You might have to go back and track God's goodness in the past. And it's easy to go back and track His goodness in the past, like the cross. That God loved you enough that He says, I don't want you to spend eternity separated from me, but I will do what needs to be done to make a way for you to enter into a relationship with the Creator God of this universe and spend forever with Him in heaven. It cost Him His Son. He sent His Son to, to, to walk on this planet and die on the cross. Why? Because of the goodness of God is on display. Because of His love for you and me. And so if you have to, go back to a time where you're like, oh, I see the goodness of God and cling to it, hold on to it. And when you're waiting for it, to see it in the present. That God loves us enough to say, I won't leave you where you are. I'll give you an option. I'll give you a path. I'll give you the possibility of saying yes to a Savior. That's the goodness of God on display. And so I just... I want to encourage you to wait, oh Lord, in the whirlwind, in life that's happening, where distractions are real. That your desire is, I just want to be where God is. And I'll wait for the Lord. I'll take heart. I'll take courage. I'll be strong. I will wait. For God. Can you just put the lyrics up on that song, I want to be where you are? In fact, Nick, can you come and sing that? I pray that's your prayer. I just want to be where you are, God. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. So we're just going to have a time of worship. By the way, none of this was planned. And if it's a new song to you, it's easy to catch on to. Would you just sing this from your heart? You can stay seated. I'm just going to tell you now. I'm going to stand. Let's worship together. I just want to be where you Just wanna be at your table surrounded 
I pray that we would be able to say God you are my one thing and for some of us that might mean we need to do some reprioritization it might mean that some of us need to repent for worshiping other idols that we've made our one thing or that we've tried to bring on the same level as you Forgive us, Father. We want to come to you, seeking you, gazing upon your beauty. And more than anything else, just being with you. <laughs> and that be our heart's cry. And that be our prayer. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.